investigate a deadly bus accident. From WROC in Rochester, this is News 8 at 11 in high definition. Tens of thousands of people line the streets of Rochester today for one of the biggest draws downtown, the St. Patrick's Day Parade. The luck of the Irish didn't bring warm weather or sunny skies, but the turnout was still impressive. Bands playing Irish music, Irish dancers, and other groups of all shapes and sizes were Irish today as they walked down East Avenue. This is the 34th consecutive year for the parade. Many people we spoke with say it's become a tradition they look forward to. Every year I meet my girlfriend Maureen down here, and um, I, my mom's 100% Irish, so I, it's something I can't miss. The parade's only once a year, so it's really nice to be looking forward to seeing the St. Patrick's Day Parade. The hats are my favorite. News 8 and our sister station Fox Rochester are proud sponsors some familiar faces there of the Tops Rochester St. Patrick's Day Parade. Well, all of those people downtown adds up to plenty of money spent in a one day economic boost for Rochester. Caroline Tucker has that part of the story. Tommy Gata is doing what he can. It's any hats or ten dollars. Uh, I got beads for a buck to make some extra cash. I am a mechanic by trade and this is just like a side, you know, weekend thing on St. Patrick's Parade Day. How about three for ten? In Rochester, street vendors $1 compete for the business. It's kind of like, you know, a love-hate relationship. We all know each other, and we hate each other while we're working. Oh, we're it. You got You're going to put this on TV, aren't you? Dave Jones is willing to open his wallet on Parade Day. Uh, anywhere from 50 to 100. And Hamlin Cindy Roach is spending two days here. Everyone's eat, having a meal. Everyone, the hotel's full. It was very challenging to get a room for two days. <laughs> so it's got to be good in the middle, of, uh, at the end of winter, let's say. Last year's warm temperatures brought out more people to downtown, but that doesn't matter because still 60 to 80,000 people converge on downtown for this parade. And this year it's a little slower, but um, it's less food. At Biblos Cafe on East Main Street, staff is still grateful for an influx of customers. It doesn't normally open on weekends. For small business owners and that, you know, people people depend on this. People depend on downtown. The Sage family Love it. reserved their space. I wouldn't want to stand out in the cold. I was like, ooh. <laughs> upstairs at the cafe. It's good for the business, good for the people. Everybody's having a good time. If you look out there, everybody's having fun. Everybody's eating food, drinking, so it's a good thing. Rochester's mayor says it never hurts to introduce people to downtown. People here today who would never be here otherwise. The key is to get them to come back. In Rochester. Come on, make some noise! Caroline Tucker, News 8. If you missed today's parade, not to worry. You can catch the entire thing on our website. Just go to rochesterhomepage.net and look for St. Patrick's Day on the front page. Well, it's tradition to hold a flag-raising ceremony before the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And today, Irish dancers from across Rochester's Irish dance schools helped kick that off. They performed inside of the county office building. Parade organizers also made a special announcement about an effort to award a Rochester Civil War hero, Colonel Patrick O'Rourke, the Congressional Medal of Honor. I cannot tell you how proud we would all be if someday we come back to this parade with a little medal that says Patrick O'Rourke was not forgotten. We won't forget him. Don't let anyone forget him. Sign our petition. Help us get long overdue recognition for Rochester's Irish American hero. But just to let you know that uh, the Colonel Patrick O'Rourke Memorial Society would like to get at least 10,000 signatures for its online petition. The St. Patrick celebrations kicked off earlier in the day with Johnny's running of the green this morning. This was the 15th year that Johnny's Irish pub has sponsored this run. The race started at Rochester's Community War Memorial at 9.30 this morning. Runners say it's a great way to get moving this holiday. Trying to teach the kids about getting healthy and doing something fun and nothing better than being Irish and doing the race. Runners who place first, second and third overall are given a cash prize. And finally, St. Patrick's Day downtown ended with the last day of figure skating at Manhattan Square Park. Everyone was invited to wear some green to save some green. Everyone wearing green was allowed to skate for free. 
Although it's a sign that spring is right around the corner, some skaters say they're sad to see the rink shut down for the season. Really sad because I go here all the time. Um, you don't have to like go in in the same direction. You just can play around with your friends. As you heard there, a local DJ provided some tunes for the skaters today. The rink will open up again next fall. We want to bring you up to speed now on a Rochester man facing arson charges following an early morning fire. Rochester's arson task force says Keith Sadek started a fire here at Southview Towers apartment buildings on South Avenue just before one o'clock this morning. No one was hurt in that fire. Some sad news out of Pennsylvania tonight where police are investigating a deadly bus crash. The accident happened about a half hour outside of Harrisburg in the town of Carlisle. The bus was carrying the Seton Hall women's lacrosse team. The team's pregnant coach and bus driver were killed. Inez Ferre has more. Crews worked to clean up the scene of a deadly bus accident in Pennsylvania. The bus carrying the women's lacrosse team from Seton Hill University veered off the Pennsylvania Turnpike and smashed into a tree Saturday morning. The force of the crash ripped apart the front of the tour bus. Police say the driver and the team's head coach died. 30-year-old Christina Quigley was about six months pregnant and her unborn baby did not survive. Rescue crews took everyone else on board, including players, to area hospitals. News of the accident quickly spread across the campus of the small Catholic school near Pittsburgh. I know that a couple of the girls were really hurt and uh, so I just know that it's not any of one that I know personally. The school will hold a memorial mass Sunday night. Investigators say no other vehicles were involved and they're still trying to piece together what caused the crash. Ines Ferre for CBS News. The lacrosse team was headed to a game at Millersville University in Pennsylvania. Regulators say the charter company is up to date on its inspections. Coming up, if you're a sap for anything maple, good news, it's maple syrup weekend. And the Carney boys and girls trying to make the state finals. Gates Chai Lai and Waterloo trying to win them. Bad round with lots of highlights later in sports. You're watching the team you can trust. Tina Shively, Rochester's most accurate forecast with meteorologist Stacy Pengen and sports with Thad Brown. This is News 8 at 11 in high definition.